Britain has produced a political class of pygmies who are wasting the opportunities of Brexit. My first broadcast interview on becoming head of the British Chambers of Commerce in 2011 concluded with my considered opinion that our political class were as pygmies by comparison with those of yesteryear. What I didn't say was that I suspected Parliament had been infantilised by becoming a county council of the EU. I also said that you could fire a shotgun in the Houses of Parliament and fail to hit anybody with a proper business background. In these woke times I would now have to say a party popper. Sadly little has changed and the upcoming election could make things even worse. Having been granted power and the scope to lead, steer the country's future direction and introduce a policy that will make people wealthier what parliament would wish to give it away. What leaders would want to crawl back into the womb? The comfort zone of having the big decisions taken by an army of technocrats. I suspect those who will not take responsibility and are generally clueless. So we see our current PM signing away responsibility for that region of his country known as Northern Ireland, Ni, or Ulster, sucking up to the rudderless President Biden and seeking to curry favour with Frau von den Leyen, and for what? The so-called benefits received for ceding territory to a foreign power were a failed control of cross-channel, illegal migrants and the avoidance of opprobrium from the USA, the avowed intent of which, under the current administration, is never to do a trade deal with the UK and to try to force us back into EU control. They have form, from the beginning of the 20th century, it was the Wilson, President, doctrine to usurp the British world system for themselves. A ready-made, English-speaking, rule of law, trading network. At least Mr Sunak has presumably retained his green card. Whatever happens to Ni, we must not let it be a ball and chain to the dynamic development of Great Britain, GB. If we do, then the EU will have one in its attempt to hold Ulster hostage in order to prevent GB divergence. The best outcome for Ireland and Great Britain will be to have a high-growth Britain. In order, no doubt, to keep us close to the EU, our current government has done everything possible not to pursue Brexit opportunities too hard. While we have benefited from no longer paying our £24 billion plus per annum membership fee to the EU the government have trousered the benefit in order to fund a bloated public sector and have chosen instead not to cut tariffs, which would have reduced the cost of living for ordinary people. I suspect Labour will also favour the landowning elites over the people and not cut tariffs. So far only a few regulations have been amended or cut, but seven years after the vote and three years on from leaving the EU we await serious, economy-boosting, people-liberating deregulation. Opposed by a big, multinational, and often foreign-owned business of the CBI, who like barriers to competition, monopolistic markets and complexity, it is highly unlikely Mr Sunak will see his best interests in standing up for the people, even less Sir Sir Keir Starmer. I would be delighted to be surprised.